Every man wants to be great and powerful. The most important thing for any man to know who wishes to express power is his own relationship to the universe. Until he does know this relationship, he is like a blind weakling seeking his own way through the dark. His power is measured by the extent to which he knows his relationship to his universe. He is also limited to that measure. Man's supreme error lies in thinking of himself as an individual unit of creation. Practically, the whole mass of mankind believes that each man is a power unto himself, independent of anything else in the universe. Each believes himself to be an individual entity whose thinking is his own, confined within his own brain, and who has power of his own within himself to act. Very few think of themselves as utterly helpless in themselves, very few know that they are as dependent upon their creator for even the slightest of their actions as an electric light bulb is upon the generator from which it extends. The relationship between the electric light bulb and its generator from which it draws its power is exactly the same as the relationship between man and God, man's only source of power. An electrician is thoroughly aware of the fact that he cannot get any light whatsoever if he disconnects his bulb from its generator. To give light, he must be co it must be connected. To get more powerful light from his generator, he must know how to make each individual bulb stronger and more powerful. It is only through such knowledge that the electrical engineer can multiply the power of a small candle power light to the candle power of a searchlight. Likewise, the only way a man can multiply his own power from mediocrity to genius is to become thoroughly aware of the one supreme universal fact that God alone is, and that nothing is existent but God. He who knows this knows that he of himself is nothing, but is all-powerful because of the Father abiding in him. Any man who knows the source of his existence without reservation as to his own independent existence, is already omnipotent, omni, uh, omnipresent, and om omnipotent. The illumined ones alone have this knowledge in, their, in its fullness. Only such men can say with full cogniz cognizance of its meaning, I can of my own self do nothing. The Father within me doeth the work. Jesus alone, of all men ever born on earth, could say this with as full a certainty of its meaning as the electrical engineer could say, these bulbs have no light in them. They can do nothing of themselves. Whatever light comes from them is extended to them from their source. It is not their own light. It is that which is in their generator. Jesus knew God as the one fulcrum of the entire wave universe. He knew the nothingness, the unreality of this mind-image-thought universe, which only seems to be. Jesus knew the orderliness of law and the processes of creation. In fact, he was the world's only consummate scientist. Because of his scientific knowledge, he was fully aware of all creating things as being extensions of each other, all being one, all being the imaginings of mind under control of mind. It was this knowledge which gave him the power to heal and to perform the so-called miracles attributed to him. Jesus was therefore the greatest man who ever lived because he had greater knowledge than any man who ever lived. Knowledge is the key that unlocks man's door to cosmic power. The more any knows, the more powerful he is or can become. Many of us try to emulate the example of Jesus with the ideal of goodness in mind. Goodness or virtue alone will not make any man great, godlike, or powerful. Goodness in any individual is the result of action according to God's law. Man must know God's law of love within his heart and soul before he can live love. Emulation or imitation alone cannot make a, great, a man great. A man must know within himself the nature of God and God's processes of creation. When we speak of brotherly love, we must know its scientific meaning in respect to the unity of the entire physical body of creation, as well as the unity of the spiritual universe of God. Jesus lived the principle of brotherly love with scientific knowledge of the unity of man. 
He knew the oneness of the omnificent light from which all things are extended to manifest the love principle of unity. He knew also the unity of the electric wave universe of seeming many parts and the balanced interchange of giving and re-giving which manifests the love principle in matter. To him there were no other men on earth than his self. That all seemingly separate other men were his own self, his own body, all being extensions of himself as his arms were extensions of his body. He had not even the concept of separateness, for he knew the wholeness of God and his one ideal. His very ideal of the brotherhood of man had no connotation of multiplicity in it. To him, brotherhood of man meant wholeness of man as one. When he said, love thy brother as thyself and love thy enemies, he did not think of the words brother and enemies as being other persons. He could not, for the oneness of the Father was in him. Polarity simply did not exist in his consciousness. The sum total of Jesus' knowledge transcended matter. To him, man's material body was unreal, his spirit alone being real, while to unillumined humans, man's body is real, being presumably controlled by spirit. Jesus was all that God is. He was the light of God's all-knowing. Because of that fact, Jesus could knowingly say, I and my Father are one. How few there have ever been who could say that knowingly, perhaps none other than Jesus. We teach the oneness of God and man in principle, and we include it in all of our religions and metaphysical literature as fundamentals. But who among men can divorce matter, multiplicity of mankind, and the ego of individuals? individuality from his concepts of unity. Man is sense-bound. Only the greatest geniuses can transcend the senses and forget the body for a sufficient length of time to become aware of God in them for the purpose of interpreting God's mighty rhythms. Jesus was never for one moment unaware of God in him as one. He forever transcended the senses of his electric body. He was wholly mind, wholly omnipotent, wholly omnipotent and omnipresent. God is love, unexpressed. God's creation is love, expressed. God's love is changeless unity. God's creation is his image division of his unity into pairs of changing opposite units, multiplied to infinity for the purpose of manifesting the power of love through interchange between opposite pairs. Love is the one supreme whole ideal of God. Desire to express love is the supreme power of God. Knowledge of how to express the power of love makes any man who has that knowledge supreme over other men. The divinity of any man is the measure of the light of love in him. The power of any man is a measure of desire to express his divinity. The greatness of any man is a measure of his ability to express love in his human relations in the manner in which God expresses love in nature. God is balance. God expresses his power in nature by balancing his opposed pairs. Creation consists of two unbalanced electrical conditions which forever seek balance in each other to manifest the unconditioned unity of balance from which they extend as moving waves. God expresses his whole one ideal of love in nature electrically by rhythmic balanced interchange of love between all pairs of electric opposites in his image universe of multiple units of his one ideal. Rhythmic balanced interchange between pairs of opposite conditions is God's one law by means of which all effects of nature are in man's world of human relations are produced. God holds this one law inviolate in all effects of cause. God always balances all of his effects of interchange in his creating universe. Man persistently unbalances so many of his effects of interchange with other men that balance is impossible for him.